Hey guys, welcome to Shop Field Music. I'm Napoleon. I'm John. Please like, subscribe, and bell it, yo. Today, what we're working on, anyway. simple setups and things. There he is, folks. Hey, I'm back. Yeah. All right. What do we do next? Next, I wanted to uh, adjust the string height on here and bring this down to uh, a little bit more player friendly in the lead register. And that's when the space is higher up here from the string, string to, to the, the fret. Yeah. Up, up here it's good because it's right by the right by the nut everything was adjusted right. i wouldn't uh the nut to me feels really good i don't think that needs to be dropped down anymore gotcha um but right here what i see is um either over time or somebody adjusted or messed with the strings on the back that could be me i could be guilty i'm not gonna lie were you trying to do a floating bridge you never know what i'm trying to do <laughs> so so the height needs to be adjusted um, but, uh, the floating bridge, um, is a little higher than I think maybe after getting the tuning just right and everything on here. So what I think I might do is before we do any saddle adjustments is let's take this back cover off here, oh. the back cover here, and we're going to access the string tension springs that are back here. <laughs> a little Phillips in here. Alright, if we can get a close-up shot of this thing. <laughs> it's, my, it's like a revolver. It's my revolver drill gun. Yeah, I can pick different sizes. I love this thing. That is amazing. It works great for all this stuff. Now when using a drill on a guitar, you take your time and move slowly. Keeping a good amount of pressure on the screw, but not too much to the point where you're going to literally strip the wood threads in the body of the guitar. The last thing you want to do is slip with your drill. You don't want to damage that beautiful little body you have there. What's behind door number one? Door number one. All right. We have three strings here. Sometimes you get them with five, four, and three. And, no. And these are, yeah, and it all depends on the, the, the strength of the tension you want to have when you're doing your whammy pulls and stuff. So here's your whammy block. And you can adjust that? Always. You can adjust this by the amount of string tension by tightening these two screws oh, here. Oh, yeah. And uh, one thing I've learned uh, working on Stratocasters is, uh, um, and let me go off topic real quick here, but this is on the same note. Um, this guy is phenomenal for uh, setting up Stratocasters and his setup. This is what taught me um, a new way to uh, go ahead about adjusting these tremolo bars and springs and stuff, and that is Carl Verheyen. Carl Verheyen was the lead guitarist from the band Supertram. And uh, I learned that his way of setting up a Stratocaster was you want to match the string tension in the front to the spring tension in the back. And so by that, I mean your thicker strings are pulling more. They're heavier because they're a thicker gauge steel. Oh, okay. And so they're heavier. They're, they're, they're pulling more. Yeah. So... What that means is you want the spring back here to be pulling more on that side than you want on the high side here. So by Sli just slightly. Slightly, just slightly. So what's gonna happen is when I'm done is this bar you see here is gonna actually be angled like this. And that is for the pure reason of matching the string tension to the spring tension. Now I um I recommend just Googling Carl Verheyen's Stratocaster setup. You'll get all kinds of awesome stuff. Detailed uh, directions on how to do it. So uh, that, uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and do that setup to this guitar because we do have a floating trim and I believe that's what Pat's going to go with on this guitar because that's where it's sitting right now. Um, and when we do some replacements, if he wants it decked out, We'll talk about how we do that and we take the springs and literally just bring it right back and sometimes we can even insert a block of wood right here behind the tremolo for decking it out 
and uh, you get a better sustaining Stratocaster that way. And that's if you're what not mean when they say it's blocked. Right. If it's blocked, you have that piece of wood back there. Right. And it's nice and snug. Or that hard, way. And a hardtail would be just screwed in. Right. Hardtail screwed in and your string through. Uh, meaning it looks just like right. a Telecaster right. on the back. So with this, I will not use a drill because these are in pretty heavy and hard. So you're going to want to grab a hand screwdriver and go about just snugging it up. Tightening it down. Now, is there certain times where you'd want to loosen this or tighten? Yep, if you want, it depends on how much travel you want on your tremolo bar. It's really personal preference when it comes to the setup of a tremolo bar. I got you. Now, with the car over high end setup, um, one thing that I learned is he likes to go when he goes all the way down with the tremolo. When he so, pulls it back, it makes it. so, you can hear that. Right. That's an F sharp to a G sharp, right? That's a full octave, right? Well, an octave would be F sharp to F sharp. But or, a whole, I'm sorry. Not a whole note. A whole step, not a whole octave. Not my a semitone, but a full tone. A full tone, yeah. Gotcha. So that's F sharp to G sharp. That's yeah, a full tone. My a bad. Full tone. So I see what you're saying. Then you can hear that. It would be better if I had the whammy so, part. So you can make the whammy where you know. Because if I pull all the way back, I'm going up two notes. So I go halfway back, it's up one note. Correct. And if I go the other way, it's down a half step or whole step. Down a half step, whole step. It's all personal preference and how you play the whammy bar and how you want to and set you can, it up. So you, when you use the whammy bar correctly, this is enlightening to me now. I think I just. I know because I, I might want a whammy bar now. Right. Well, you've been you've been so itching you, that for a while. You can make it. Because I just like you just. Hit it. I didn't know it did. A lot of actually, a lot of rock people will actually have the the uh, the bridge itself relatively low to the to the uh, to the body to where all they're getting is downward pressure. A lot of rock guys do that. That's all they want. You know, they want the bomb. And that's that's a flattening. That's thing. a flattening thing. But, but personally, I like to be in the middle. And with Carl Verheyen's setup, the done right, uh, it stays in tune. Uh, that uh, Carl Verheyen signature LSL guitar that I have came with his setup and I have been intrigued with it because I'm studying that I have been so impressed that this thing is staying in tune and I have this floating and his is a bridge real similar to this it has the vintage style screws here it's not the two post deal and the two post deal is a little nicer because you can take the bridge bring it up level the bridge out and have that exact mm height that you want in there so you're getting your your uh, whatever you want for your tones on the up and down with it so what are you doing there <laughs> putting my whammy bar in there oh that sounds about good it does sound like pretty it. good i mean like you could, if you wanted to get really detailed you could hook it up to a tuner and actually oh yeah you, yeah and that's what i'll do is you know i'll check it with the tuner to see I'm just I mean, going to loosen these it up. It won't be perfect for all of them, but you what? Try to make the uh, the low E or A string do a full yeah. tone. And then With Curl Verheyen, the way he does it is, is right here. He always says, This is what I want because this is how he plays. And then, uh, you know, you got your flattening. Nice. And this is the older style. Uh, yeah, bridge well, here. Well, so it's an old, it's an old bridge. It's an old guitar. Right. Uh, it's got the the six screws they call it. You know, which is the vintage style. That's the Carl Verheyen's that way. So his bridge is doing the same thing that yours is doing. It's angled like this. Yeah. They came out with the two post. I think your Strat has the two post, doesn't it? Well, well, let's take a look. No, you have the vintage. Nice saddles too. Those are the vintage style saddles. I like those. Um, yeah, so you have the vintage style bridge here as well. So what we would do is the same setup that we're doing here on this one with yours. And if you look at my car over high end, it's the same way. I got the vintage style. But like my Pete Thorne signature um, sir guitar, that has the two post. All right, so I think we've got that. Now is that at an angle now then? The, uh, the back? Yeah. Yes. Slight angle? Yeah, it is a slight angle there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... You call that good for now? Yeah. So you can always adjust the taste as well. Oh, of course, yeah. I think that's good. 
And will that have any uh, tuning stability issues by adjusting that at all? Or that's just uh, get that set up and go? Nope, you, you should always check tuning. You turn a screw on the, car, on the guitar anywhere, I really think you should always check your tuning and make sure that you're good. Um, intonation wise, you're going to be probably fine, but depending on how much you're moving it. Uh, mm -hmm. you bring in this whole, if you bring this whole thing down and start dropping saddles, we got to redo the ah, intonation right. and the tuning. So if well. you do a drastic change on something, then right. you might want to double check. Exactly. Gotcha. Your neck has to have a slight bow in it. Now I'm exaggerating my hand. Right. That is really not what's happening, but that is... Uh, and it, how do you check that the neck is straight? Well, I use straight edges and uh, I have a special neat little tool that I gathered from Stumac and oh, also yeah. Philadelphia Luthier. I think this one came from the uh, Philadelphia Luther. Okay, but they sell them at Stumac as well. You get these at Stumac as well, or Philadelphia Luther. Uh, I think what, what are, what those, are those are not just cut out for your frets on your guitar. So if you have a strong guitar and Do they line up on both sides, you have a short scale, and this the top one is the short scale. So that would be your Gibson. Steel. Oh, okay. guitar, twenty-four and three-quarter. Gotcha. And the long scale up top here, which would be your twenty-five and a half, which would work for your most acoustics and your uh, Stratocaster or Strat Stratocaster or S-style guitars, Telecasters, so on, T-style guitars. T-style. <laughs> so we can take this, okay, and literally set it on the guitar. And if it sits flat, you're good. Yep. And if it's well, you can see in the center. Uh, you want to have a little bit of oh, light right, so coming through, and you want it touching at the back and front here, whichever way you're looking at it. Uh, <laughs> you want it tight on the sides, and you're going to have a little gap. There are other tricks if you do not have one of these, um, nor do you want to purchase one of these, because maybe you just have one guitar that you need to work on, and that's it. You can actually use Well, your... I got about 12 guitars that you need to work on. <laughs> we'll get to those in another video. <laughs> and so you can use the string to actually determine the straightness of your neck. Ah, and that's the where you hold it down on a certain spot and you see yep. the distance. You, you, uh, you can push down at the first fret or get a capo, it's usually easier. And then you can push down on uh, you know where the, the neck meets the body, mm -hmm. usually is what the case right, is. Right, yep, yep. And then uh, where, where do you... And then it? you find the center point, and usually at that point you should be able to slide a small or thin business style um, business card underneath that. And if you can do that, that's probably a pretty good relief. Okay. It's a good way to start. Um, if you're a beginner and you don't have like uh, some special tools and all that do stuff. Do you have to do it on every string? Uh, just the outside strings is all you need to worry about. Okay. Um, now a good luthier, somebody who knows their business and working on stuff, can take and grab a guitar and push down those two strings and tell you if your neck is twisted too. Pretty neat. That's actually something I recently learned not too long ago. Twisted. Like yep. Necks can twist? Necks can twist because necks and guitars we all know are made of wood and steel and those expand and contract and move. Wood is a living, breathing thing. Well, it was once, but then I cut it and killed it so that I could have a guitar. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, you didn't do it. I, you I just need, I need to, They need to make recycled guitars. I know. Well, every time you exchange or, hands with money, I think or, you're killing a tree, aren't you? Man, I almost feel bad now. Right, well, I mean, they do make carbon fiber stuff now. You know what make me feel better? What's that? A new guitar. We should go buy a new guitar. Yeah. Oh, well, anyway, so what were we saying? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, you can use your strings to, uh, to actually determine if you have a twisted neck um, or if, you know, the proper relief of your neck. Um, sometimes if your, your neck is doing one of these numbers here, uh, that's when you're gonna see buzzing happening okay. um, and funky sounds coming from your guitar. And um, adjusting the neck, I really highly recommend if you haven't done it. Um, now, if you got a guitar that you're playing and like you feel like you really got to push the strings down a long ways to get to the neck, especially now it might be okay here, but right. down here it's it's like you got like it feels like an inch. Right, you're too high up. The action is super That's high. Action. All yeah, right. say your strings are way up high and you can't play lead, but for whatever reason playing first position chords, rhythm and stuff, it's perfect. And right. my brother-in-law has lots of guitars like yeah. that. He's a he Is that a neck problem? That is a neck problem 
as well as a saddle adjustment problem. And so oh, therefore right. the relief in the, in the neck, depending on who worked on the guitar before you, um, may have thought that maybe they just needed to lower the action in the nut so they'll file the nut slot down further to oh. get the strings closer. And that will work for up here, but, but then, not down here. But then if you file the nut before you're ready to file the nut, you can't unfile the nut. Correct. Does the ruler, or you're just using string tension, does it make a difference? Is, is one better than the other, or are they just two different avenues to go about the same approach? For the straightness of the neck? Yeah. Oh, this just two different approaches is all. I mean, gotcha. you have, I mean, a, a lot of your, your big luthiers and guys that really, I mean, that are, you know, this is all they do. Uh, a lot of those guys will use the string. I mean, they'll just, it's there. It's, yeah. I gotcha. So I like to push down on the first fret, then where the body and the neck meet, and then come up here in the middle, give it a tap, and just get an idea what that uh, that looks like. We're we're uh, we're actually. It probably could use a little adjustment. We've got a right now. We've got a pretty pretty heavy bow in it, so it probably wouldn't hurt to uh, give this a little turn on the on the truss rod. And again, it's, it could be the seasons that's changing it. Uh, so if you have this cool tool, you can use it. Um, short scale and long scale. You just need to line up the long scale to the short scale. And, and then let's go in between the frets. Let's go in between the frets and look at that. Okay. And I see a little bit off right here. Oh yeah, I see quite a bit in the center. So really this 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 neck could uh, just need to be adjusted and then uh, per se our height adjustment would be perfect. So yeah, now because I can see a little bit more gap than maybe we'd want. Yep. That means it needs to Oh, straight straight now it right now it's oh, smiling yeah. okay it's not making a sad face when right. you're looking at a guitar right it's, it's going this it's making way. a smile it's going this way that's right, right. Now. that's right so, so we want to overcompensate that way so how do we turn the nut I need to tighten it if it's smiling you want to know how I learned how to do the truss rod adjustment how did you learn uh, remember that Yamaha guitar that you got from Kevin yeah and then I ended up with it you did a truss rod adjustment on that? No, I didn't. But it came with a truss rod Allen wrench in the case, and there was a little little packet and a little tiny direction yeah, note card. You. And I still have that to this day. It's just packed away in my toolbox somewhere back home. But it tells you directly on there, because it, it, it can be a little confusing when you get online and start looking at different, um, like, okay, which way do I turn, and you know, who's who's giving the directions? Which way are they looking at the guitar? You know. But it is tightened. I'm pretty pretty sure it is. And there's ways we can check that too without getting carried away where I can slowly start making some adjustments and checking with my ruler to see the clearances and, and if it's tightening right. up. So back bow or up bow? This would be an up bow. This is an up bow. To so correct smiling. up bow, you would then want to reduce the amount of relief. Reduce it and make your guitar a little easier to play, you'll want to tighten the truss rod or turn the truss rod nut clockwise. That's what I thought, so tightening it. <laughs> I'm hoping I have the right Allen key here. So uh, I did not bring my set of Allen keys, so we're hoping. Yay, it fits. All right. I was really hoping for that. And we decided that we needed to tighten this. Correct. So, so we, if you have an upside bow. Right. Or a smile when the guitar is this way. Right. You tighten. So we decided that was clockwise. Let's give it a, a light turn. Okay. okay. And then what I like to do is you do the string test. Take actually take the guitar and give it a little push, putting pressure down here by the heel and putting a little bit up here. That just gets the wood moving a little quicker. So we're going to check it with our straight edge now, and I'm going to check the relief now, and. Uh, and you can see here, it is starting to close up, which oh, is what good. we want to see. All right. So, you know, that trick we talked about with the strings and a business card. Yes. I'm kind of looking for that same amount of space between the ruler and the center of it. Mm -hmm. So it does need to go just a little bit more. Okay. And that was clockwise. clockwise. Let's give it a little turn here. It's good to... You know we have a nice working truss rod. Again, we come up here, grab the heel, put a little pressure on this, just kind of get the wood moving, moving the a little wood. bit. Yeah, right. moving the wood. Straight edge on the neck. All right, and I'm checking again for that little <laughs> space. 
All right, looks like I could go even a little bit more, which is cool. I like that because that's dropping the action as we do this as well. <laughs> John, can I have a turn on this? You can have a turn on this. All right, so it's my turn? Yeah, give it a turn. I'm just gonna turn it about a quarter turn. That's what I'm looking for. You know, you wanna make sure that it turns nice. You don't want it to, right. you don't want to be, I mean, there's tension certainly, but if it's not oh, moving, yeah. you should probably stop. Stop right then and there. All right, so it moved. And when you're adjusting the truss rod, this really should be done by somebody that knows what they're doing. So not me? Don't go turning truss rod. <laughs> if That's you don't know what you're doing, we need to... Uh, yeah, that should be a song. Don't go turn it. That didn't just happen. Okay, we're going to check our ruler again. All right. I'm seeing some space there. It looks a little thicker than a business card. So we, again... Man, it looks like somebody messed with this truss rod, I think, at some point. Did you know. do this? I, well, we also adjusted the uh, floating bridge. That's so, right. So you think that would adjust? Oh, um, everything you do to this guitar, any, any guitar, you start making adjustments, It's gonna you're going to see it everywhere. Okay. Go ahead and give that another quarter turn, yeah. Napoleon. Okay, I will. All right. Quarter turn. It's starting to get tight. That's good. Let's see where we're at. Okay. Okay, and a lot of times when you're doing your adjustments, uh, it's going to take a little bit longer for the wood to catch up with the tightening of the, mm. the truss rod that's in there. So uh, we'll make these adjustments, and if there's still just a little bit bigger of a gap than I like to see in here, that's all right. We're going to let it sit for a little bit, and you got to do what, what I call letting the wood catch up. And I like that. That looks good. I don't have any sad faces or smiles. That's good. Right. What we can do now too is let's check with the string itself. Where the neck meets the body in the first fret. Let's see where we're at. Oh, that is awesome. I like that. Okay. That's almost a straight neck with just a slight little bit of relief. Let me check this out. Yeah. We have to tune it now because yeah. we've been adjusting things. Oh, that's nice. The action feel pretty good? Oh, yeah, that's nice. Tune it up. There's your tuner. Nice. You like it? Yeah. Okay. So, all right. now at you know, I got to tell you the... You tune it up for me then? I did, Good. and... Well, it's... Do you see a slight little bit of space in the center? Yeah, it looks pretty darn straight. That's what you want to see. You don't want to have it tight. All right. Well, that's... That's nice. That feels pretty good. Cool. And the playability. Oh, the playability. Up the right. ante. I tell you, to be honest with you, the... Uh, the, we don't have to mess with the height. Not though. a lot. I mean, I know you want to have a bit of a. Uh, you want to kind of mirror the neck, right? Oh yes. When you adjust your saddles, you want them to follow the radius of the, of the fingerboard. Right. And I mean, you can get exact and measure it, but just kind of eyeing it. Looks and feels pretty good. It does. You want your e, your low E string to be a little higher than your high E string. Yeah. As you're adjusting your saddles for the height and the radius, because your low E string um, is um, going to move more. More vibration comes a lower. Than your high E string, and if you, you set that the same right. height as that, you get a lot of buzz that way. I was gonna say the height you can check buzz for height, mm -hmm. right? That's, and if you're getting buzz anywhere, you just correct. Now I could actually play lead on this guitar. Right. <laughs> the action is right, right right where I like it. Now the bass string, do you think it needs to go up at all? I'm going to check Did the... you hear any buzz? I didn't hear any buzz really. I think uh, to me that sounds good. We're going to check the height now. I have a digital oh. meter. Oh, that's even better. And that tells you what? What it's supposed to be? Uh, well, it tells you what it is. Okay. And um, again, personal preference. Personal Your string preference. height can be wherever you want it. There's no... There's no set rule to it. This just tells you what you have. 
So, uh, do you know what you like yet? Um, usually, like, can you say I like mine to be about here? Five sixty fours and seven sixty fours, high E string to low E string is usually about where I'm at. Okay, so the answer is yes. I uh, and I always go right to the twelfth fret, and uh, we set this down, we zero it out, and let's see what this says. We're three sixty fours, and so that is nice and low. Let's zero that out again. One sixteenth. Okay. So that tells you that tells you that the the height be from the bottom of the string to the top of the fret. Mm -hmm. So that is your action. That is the action you have on the twelfth fret, uh, which is what a setup is based on around the twelfth fret here. So we'll go like this. And do you think Zero. it's too low, or do you think it's good? Every guitar is different. But we could put Dixie up here and... Uh, to measure? To measure Dixie and oh, see. Oh, yeah, we could. Why don't you hold on to this for a second? I'll grab Dixie and let's do a... Uh, comparison? Comparison, and then I can really know what it is that I like. So, you've got your Gibson out. We've just pulled out Dixie, yes. Uh, we we just pulled out Dixie, and... Uh, and this is your Les Paul. This is my the... go-to guitar that I always play. What year is this? Uh, 2014. And it's a signature model, or what is it? It's the first time Gibson did a tribute to uh, music genera. Oh, uh, that's right. This is the uh, Southern Tribute, right? And this is the Southern Rock Tribute. 2014 uh, is when they did that. Very nice. Have we seen this in any of your videos? You have. You've seen it probably in quite a few of them. Yeah, and uh, I know you'll be doing a review of it soon. Yeah, whenever I'm doing lead work, you will definitely see me on this guitar. Gotcha. Uh, everything down here on the the higher section of the neck where I like to do the lead work is uh, it's just set up beautifully and uh, it's just easy to play. So you like where the action is on this guitar? Yes. So we'll check the action on this guitar. And and, uh, and match it to that. That's what I did for Pat on his Ibanez. Uh, he liked that one a lot. And he so. liked it a lot apparently yeah. so I'm gonna match what I've got okay. here for him on that one as well. And you just have to do the uh, two E strings, the high and low? The high and low, right. And then and just Kind of and then you're going to match the, uh, I mean, you can, you can certainly check each one to, to see where our adjustments are right. in there. But a lot of it you can tell by running your finger across the saddle on a Stratocaster like this. And you can feel the hump, and it should be the same radius. A lot of times you can take a radius card. Oh, yeah, I've seen, yeah, that's what, do you have those? That's I have what I've seen. Here. And you take one of these radius cards here. And, um, oh no, you know what I've seen? They've got these, uh, it's like a T. Yes. But it's got a little This brown. is the same thing. Oh, they are angled. Yes. So. Oh, this is for. Nine, nine and, and a half. half. I'm pretty sure that's a nine and a half radius. We'll have to double check. How does that match up? Nine and a half. Let's check the nine and a half on the wide. Set it down here. Yep. And then you want this to be the same radius. Yeah. And so you can check wow. it by going right here. Yeah, that looks pretty darn good. Yes, it does. You know, and, and if you want to check your strings and not the fretboard, now you have a nine and a half without the cutouts for the strings, and you can lay those on the strings. And you can check the radius of the actual string. Ah. As you're so they're just nice little cards. Uh, I picked these up at Philadelphia Luthier. So nine and a half inch wide. We know that's a nine and a half inch radius. Mm. And, uh, and that looks good. I'm, the, the strings are already set to where I would set them if I were adjusting it myself. So, yeah, so that uh, looks good. Just check the height of yours and see if they're at the same height. Correct. Good to go. And then we can... We would adjust them all accordingly up or down probably. Right. All right, so we're going to set this on. We're going to zero it out. Push it down. I'm 364. That's what this was. Look at that. Wow. Okay, let's check over here, because we knew that one was a 16th. On a Stratocaster, I would always make the low E string a little bit higher. Stratocasters rattle more. See, I'm 364 here, versus the 16th. And I would leave that the way it is, because it's a Stratocaster, and Stratocasters are just known. The 25 and a half inch scale is longer than the 24 and 3 quarter scale that you see on a Gibson, and so therefore the string bounces up and down more than a 24 and 3 quarter because yeah. this is tighter because it's it's you have a shorter span. 
I think this guitar is about ready to be a player. I think so. So what else do we need to do to this? We right? need to put the cover back on the back. Oh yeah, let's put the cover back on. So we're good with your guitar, I'll put it away. Thank you. Right, let's get Mitch to do it. Ye Mitch! Come on, Mitch! Mitch! So now that the Gibson's put away, we, uh, we like the bow of the neck. The intonation's good. The action's good. I like it. Let's see where this. Let's see where this. I like it, it too, John. I think uh, let let's let it sit for a little bit, and uh, we'll work on some other ones, and then we can double check it. But of course, like we said, we need to get this uh, back plate on, don't we? Yes. To finish this up. Could I get you to grab those other screws in there for me? You know, I can do that for you, Thanks. sir. Line up the holes. Get our screws again. You can see there's paraffin wax on my screws and in the screw holes, so we are all set. We never want to have anything cracking or stripping. We want to lube them up. And then just take these down. I never like to use a drill to put them down. These things strip real easy. But there's a guy that taught me a really cool trick. And if you're in a bind and you strip out one of your screws, I recommend you keep a little set of toothpicks with you. Because you might get something stuck in your teeth. No, because this guy showed me that if you strip a screw and you really can't replace it with a bigger screw or anything, and you don't want to, you take a toothpick and you shove that toothpick in the hole. It's soft enough wood that it'll take the thread of the screw as you're going in, and all of a sudden that hole that was stripped out is now snug. Ah. Now with a guitar, it's wise to take a little drop of glue with that as you're doing it. Sure. But if you're doing something like a door replacement or whatever, you wouldn't need to really use glue for that. But on a guitar, because you don't well, we want We are that not glow, a door replacement channel. We are not door connoisseurs. So yes, um, the toothpick trick has saved me quite a few times, and I like it. All right. This guitar is ready to be set aside. Check out the... Uh, Strum it. The new neck plate. Give her a play, Nat. All right. Tell me how this thing sounds. Well, I've always liked the neck on this guitar. That is a nice one. That's why I was surprised you were giving it away. Well, as you know, I already have one with a maple neck. I just want one with a rosewood neck. And, and I know the work you can do. You can make that neck feel like this neck for Oh, yeah. And we will. Yeah. Good action. Very right? nicely done. Listen to that resonate. Yeah. Wow. Just a simple setup and how you can make something sound so good. Very nicely done. Well, that should conclude this video, I think. Um, I know we have a neck plate to put on my guitar there. That's right. But, uh, you know, perhaps we can have you take that one up. Up north when I go up there. And work on that. Put it on the bench up there. Put it on the bench up there and give it a full setup just like this. You bet. We'll hit the record button. You folks can watch that one too. Well, there you go. Maybe we'll have some upgrades for that guitar. Oh, I'm excited. We'll see what we can do. I like where your head's at. All right. Well, for all of us here at Shot Field Music, thanks for watching. As always, leave some comments in there if uh, you learned anything from this video or if you have any suggestions for us. That's right. Maybe ways we could do this differently. Hey, throw them down there. I like it. I'm open. That's right. I always like to learn new things and I want to know better ways of doing something. So like the video, subscribe. Uh, Bill it, you! So now, well, let me get. <laughs> no, so now until I'm see, sitting. <laughs> so now we're gonna do the uh, truss and rod action. So now we're gonna do the Wait, truss rod right. adjustment. That's too too soon. So now we're gonna do the truss rod adjustment. That's so right. So now we're gonna do the. So now we're gonna do the truss rod adjustment. That's right, John. <laughs>